Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we're seeing actually, you know, relatively quiet start uh, or actually session overall. I mean, obviously, we had some pretty big uh, movements in uh, crude oil right off the right off the get go. Um, as we topped out, I think it was sixty three forty five. We're trading basically four dollars lower at fifty nine twenty three. Um, <clears throat> but Surprisingly, the S and P's did not sell that much. We did do the uh, gap here in uh, dollar yen. We did see uh, yen pairs uh, strengthen on the safe haven uh, move. But if you look at the if you look at the market overall, it's quiet overall. I mean, you know, if you take into consideration, uh, we did see dollar cad um, gap. I thought that was going to happen. Actually, I thought we'd gap even further. Um, I got short um, on this move up towards thirty two forty. I ended up covering after uh, Trump said about, you know, gave his spiel about the SPR and actually jumped right back up and went up to, I think, 32.46 before rolling down and going sub 32.20. And then at that point, I just wanted out. And it looks like that was a good move to get out because, like I said, um, you know, here we are still pressing uh, above that key 32.52, which really sparked quite a bit of short covering on Friday that uh, we had referenced. If we got above 3252, it was really going to generate some good short coverage. I thought we might get some people trapped and that might open the door for us to move lower. Um, and actually, we were starting to work lower here in the dollar cad pre-futures um, open. But then when uh, Trump about 10 minutes before, uh, you know, timing timing is everything, goes and announces the SPR, dollar cad jumps right back up. And then little by little, we kind of, you know, started to eventually roll back down after a while, though. And then, um, yeah, I didn't want to know part of it when, at that point. I thought, well, it will probably still have to dip. But um, I was just glad to get the hell out of Dodge uh, on that short. Um, cable, same thing. Everything is quiet. I mean, that, that's if you look at it. Everything is relatively quiet. Look at the Aussie. Dolly in, we did get gap. Obviously, safe haven flows there. Dollar peso, I thought that might come under some pressure. Quiet. Cable, quiet. Euro, quiet. Dollar index, quiet. I mean, really, there's not that much reaction at all, be be quite honest with you. I mean, we'd have to go into the cross rates. Um, let's take a look there. To see any actual real movement, with the exception of the yen. You know what I mean? You know, we did go in and see, um, once again, yen related. We saw the Aussie yen. Gap lower, return back to the scene of the crime. Uh, Guppy, gap lower, return to the scene of the crime, and then pull them back. You know, uh, we did see, but look at look at the the Sterling Aussie. We worked a little bit lower. Um, Euro Aussie, not that much of a change. Um, Euro Kiwi, you see what I'm saying? Other than the yen pairs, I mean, here's Euro Yen. We would already had a pretty good run up going into Friday. Uh, a gap low, and then we kind of start working our way up. So when you think about it, I mean, you can probably look at it. Well, once again, yeah, related. I was going to say CAD, yeah. I mean, really, it wasn't that much of it. We haven't seen that much of a reaction in FX, with the exception of yen, and that's to be expected because of the safe haven flows in the yen. There has not been no reaction in the FX market for the most part. You know, we can look at, you know, like I said, the yen pairs, safe haven. Canadian? because of the impact, you know, you know, with crude oil. And like I said, that seems like, well, that's obvious, but I'm just saying, you're not seeing it once again, with the exception of, of that, yen safe haven flow and, you know, Canadian oil is important. With the exception of that, there's no reaction in FX, none. I mean, look at the euro. Tell me that there's a reaction to the, to the crude oil. Look at the cable. Is there a reaction? No. You see what I'm saying? Aussie dollar. Oh. Dollar peso. Nope. Oh. I mean, you can even look at the S&Ps. There isn't that, even that much of a reaction. You know, gold is even, even the, even uh, when you look here, and I'm just trying to put things in perspective. Even when you look at gold, look at gold. The reaction, but was there anything like, you know, like did we see like a twenty-five or thirty-five dollar rally? No. Nope. So rally, but but then again, look how look how much gold has fallen. So really very inconsequential reaction. 
when you consider what all Krulo had done. And trading view, very, very poor, poor thing with, with trading view. Doesn't even have the, the actual move here. We saw the other way up to 63.44. I'm not sure what happened there. So I've been using, you know, I was using um, as a backup my uh, uh, think or swim system. You know, I use that as a backup. Sometimes you'll see that pop up. Use that as a backup. Got to always have a backup. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, this is really piss poor, you know, right here. Something as important as crude oil. And we don't, you know, we don't even, trading view doesn't even show it until it's $3 lower. Then finally quotes start popping up. So always make sure you have a backup. Um, but anyway, let's go and get back into the news. So like I said, very inconsequential uh, reactions. I mean, reactions? You'd have to look at your and say, what reaction? You know what I mean? So um, let's go and take a look. The dollar falls in oil exporter currencies rise after Saudi attacks. The dollar fell while safe havens and currencies of oil-producing countries rallied on Monday following an attack of Saudi Arabian refining facilities that disrupted global oil supply and heightened Middle East tensions. Oil prices surged uh, for, uh, surged nearly a fifth at 1% following the strikes of two plants, including the world's biggest petroleum processing facility in Abqaiq, while knocked out more than 5% of global oil supply. Yemen's rally aligned Houthi group claimed responsibility for damage, but the U.S. has pointed to the finger directly at Iran. The Canadian dollar had moved um, to 32.33. The Norwegian krona rose uh, half, ten, half percent or 0.5 percent. Um, the natural flow through higher oil prices seen the Nokia and the Canadian outperform and we'll probably see a a better feel towards the Russian ruble later on, said Chris Weston. But if you think about it, yeah, those are directly affected. Are you seeing any reaction anywhere else? Look at the S&Ps. It was down 10 handles. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? That's what I say, gold, you know, we did see a rally, but call it a minor rally after the market has lost more than $60. So, yeah, there's no, there's been no real reaction whatsoever here overall, other than the, the – those, you know, individuals, and now I say individual, I mean the currency pairs so that were directly affected. Yen, Safe Haven, Canada. And I guess to a certain extent, you know, uh, Norwegian Corona. That's it. The tax reversed last week's ambulant risk appetite and prompted U.S. President Trump to tweet that the U.S. was locked and loaded for a response. We've got a BDI on this, and we're prepared to pile back to the Japanese yen after last week's uh, repositioning lesson said, and that while trade was calm, the strikes presented another geopolitical what-if to vex markets. The safe haven uh, Japanese yen and Swiss franc both firmed. Beyond all, the currency markets are waiting the outcome of the central bank meetings in the U.S. and Japan this week and economic data in Australia and New Zealand that could determine the rates outlook in the antipodes. The geopolitical risks and central bank rhetoric remain key drivers of risk this week. On the Brexit, Johnson, confidence of a sealed, uh, sealed deal to leave the European Union, applied pressure to the pound. While much of the risk appetite to display, uh, display last week was driven by the signs of a thawing news China trade tensions, the fresh uh, indications of progress left sentiment fragile. Data released on Monday showed the slowdown in China's economy deepened in August with industrial production at its weakest. In the U.S., investors uh, who had begun trimming expectations for Federal Reserve rate cut on Wednesday are now certain rates will fall, divided only how much. As for the Bank of Japan's policy decision on Thursday, a third of the economists pulled by Reuters expect stimulus to be ramped up, but sources say it may be a close call as policymakers wait till the last minute to assess the market's reaction to the Fed's decision hours earlier. And on the morning bid, uh, a crude awakening, oil shocks are one thing, but an oil shock into a global downturn is quite another. After the initial gasp that the, that took pro, uh, 
Brent crude above 70 for the first time since May. Prices have settled about 10% higher following the weekend attacks on Saudi production facilities. That could hit some 5% of the world output. Brent was trading about 66.50. The first thing is investors weighed up the more likely length of the outage after the drone attacks claimed by Yemen Houthi rebels set facilities ablaze and sparked another war of words between Washington and Tehran over regional tensions. The impact of an injury spike can cut both ways from markets. Uh, stock markets fell through, uh, fell although not dramatically. Tokyo markets were closed for the holiday, but U.S. and European stock futures were down about six tenths each. Saudi tech came as uh, China reported annual industrial production output grew just 4.4 percent in August. Its slowest growth in more than 17 years. Retail sales grew 7.5 percent below forecasts. Uh, in European Union news: uh, Lufthansa. Uh, Airlines from Lufthansa to British Airways are expected to fall as much as 5% after the surge in prices. So let's just go on in. Uh, <clears throat> and there's no real data to, to uh, speak of. We'll quickly take a look at this. We'll move on to the prices. So we do have uh, Mexican CPI, and that's going to be a 3 no, that's, I apologize. Italian, I was Mexican. Italian, uh, I was one thing. That, that's kind of early. Uh, but anyway, New York Fed manufacturing at 8.30 Eastern, and pretty much that's it till we get into um, the Asian session with, with, with uh, Westpac Consumer Confidence or Survey um, and China housing prices. So let's go on and move into the um, charts. They put on here. The U.S. staged a strong rally on ECB day, but lacked follow-through into Friday's close. The pair needs a daily close above 11.13. You can see that that pink line. That's been there for quite some time. Um, and you can see they just about tagged it and then rolled back. Above 11.13 to generate further upside. Critical support comes in at 10.33. A close below 11.36. Um, and I meant to put, I don't know why I put that 10.30, should meant 10.36, opens immediate challenge to 9.67. So um, this is right here. We've got our support here at 10.33. That's going to be critical right there. And you don't want to get that close below. And I put 11.36, so apologies there. Let me just get that corrected. We'll open a challenge to 9.67. So we'll put support here at 10.33. Resistance remains 11.13. Right there. It's going to be a support right there. I should show you right there. There's a lot. 10.33. Let's move into the cable. Cable finished out the week on a squeeze after breaking a downside trend line the week before. There's potential to challenge the major level of 2602, but immediate resistance will be 2527. The 161% of 2309 to 1959. Support comes in at 2352. A daily close below 2284 would invalidate the upside. So let's take a look here with the cable. And uh, here was talking about that 2352. Obviously, I mean, this is a more on a looking more on a daily because we can certainly go and pull back. So let's take a look what we stand here with the cable.
Yeah, we can certainly go and pull back, but right there you have it's going to be twenty three ninety. Let's go with twenty three eighty two on the downside. And the upside will be right there, 2482, 2482. For today. There, And take a look at what the Aussie. The Aussie closed just above resistance level of 68.75. Immediate resistance is 69.11, confluence with the 69.06 to 161%, um, and 69.28. Support is 68.31. That daily close below 68 negates the upside momentum. Uh, we're doing pretty good. So you see, that's what I'm saying is look at this. I mean, you would think about the risk and all this stuff. There's basically been no reaction overall for the most part. I mean, I think it's even a stretch to call it a limited reaction, to be quite honest with you, with the exception of those that were directly impacted, and I would say yen, or safe haven currency, and let's say Canadian dollar, energy producing nation, uh, and Norwegian krona. Uh, with the exception of those two, for the most part, there's been very limited reaction at all, okay? I mean, look, it's like you would think that nothing even happened. Look at the Aussie dollar. You know what I mean? So, um, so if we do get that little bit of a stretch, we'll call it, we'll definitely stay here with the 6911. You do have a nice confluence here, so we'll say 6911. Actually, considering how weak the Chinese data came in, I'm surprised that, I mean, uh, how um, it's holding up so well at this point. Let's take a look here on the two hour. I'll go right there, 68.52 for support. And let's go and move into the Kiwi.
Huge finish the past week, backsliding below key weekly level 63.89. You can see that there. Um, a daily close below 63.58 places the bears back in control, nullifying the recent upside breakout. The pair needs a daily close above 64.52 to force bears to cover. So we're below this key area here. This six, uh, 6389 is huge. It's been a big weekly level from, I mean, obviously you can see from way, 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 way back when. See yeah, the importance of that. All the way back to 2016. We're not too far below, but we're still below it nonetheless. We're going to put our support here right there. 6360. And resistance is going to be right there, 6423. We'll move into the Donald Cad. Now, this is a bit surprising. I thought we would have, in light of the strength that crude oil, uh, you know, the, of the strength of the move, I would have thought that we would have opened sub 32, and we didn't. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad I, you know, like I said, got the hell out of Dodge on my uh, short. I was able to grab, I think, like 15 or 16 pips. But I was glad to go on and get out because um, I would have expected more. I would have expected us to open and just start to challenge lower. And so, so I was staying. The dollar clad closed above 32.52, knocked out some shorts who were looking for 130. Okay. Um, now, in light of the drone attacks on Saudi oil fields with an expected lower gap on Sunday, the pair will look to challenge at 31.36 with additional support of 30.89. Uh, resistance will be 32. Well, we didn't. I mean, we opened lower, but I thought we would have pressed lower, and we did not. So um, right now, immediate resistance is going to be right there, 32.87. And I'm have to. I don't want to go and turn around and say this is bullish by any means whatsoever, uh, but, uh, but we did knock out some shorts when we got above thirty-two fifty-two. So now, on the downside, If we were to make a slide back down, then support would be Going to the peso. And I would have thought we'd have had a little bit more reaction with crude oil. But once again, like I said, you're seeing very limited reaction in crude oil. Not saying, I mean, I'm a bit surprised here, but um, it is what it is. 
Uh, dollar peso has receded back to the support level of 1937, confluence with 1932, which is the 61% of the move of 1875 to 2025. The drone strike will likely result in a challenge of the breakout level of 1923. Support below is 1913. The pair needs a daily close above 1960 to reassert the upside. Well, like I said, you can see here that there's basically no reaction whatsoever. Um, I thought we would at least you know, see a lower opening here. So we're still holding here. So uh, we'll go with the, the the support. We did like that 1937 towards the middle and last latter part of last week, but we'll open the door for them to just work a little bit lower to hit maybe some stops. So we'll go with 1932, which is a 61%. And on the upside, uh, we'll go with this uh, 1951. And it's still bullish overall, although we're, we've certainly come back up quite a bit. Let's go move into the dollar yen. <clears throat> dollar yen has rallied with the uh, on the strength of the U.S. ten-year yields to the um, eight twenty-seven. 70, which is a 78% of this entire move of 445 to 931. The drone strike may generate an immediate safe haven move with support com levels coming in at 752. Well, we did actually make it down to that 752. Actually, looks like we went down to 746. So with uh, so support level 752 followed by 716, a daily close below 673 places the bears back in full control. So here we are rallying right back. Obviously, the concern is with the BOJ. Uh, yes, 10-year yields have even dropped back a little bit, but uh, the concern is with the BOJ. They do expect some action to be taken. So... Support's going to be that 752 that we referenced. And the upside. For right now, we'll be right there. 813. We made the case right there too. 798. We'll split the difference and call it 805. 805. And when I say split the difference, you can see right there. Comes in 804. 804. You can see these touches coming right across there. So we'll go with 804. Let's move into the cash dollar index. The dollar index may see a safe haven pop to start the week on the backdrop of the drone strike. Upside resistance will be 99.09. Once again, there's been no reaction for the most part the drones at all. Um, followed by 99.37. Support remains a lower portion of the zone of 98.21. So you can see basically no reaction here, the dollar index. So taking that into consideration, resistance will be ninety eight sixty two. Portal be ninety eight right there. 
Open Clock 98 even. And with that, we'll go and move into the cross rates. And well, like I said, <clears throat> we saw some reaction, obviously, with the yen pairs as a safe haven low, uh, and some of the uh, energy um, currencies, but basically, that's been it. The Kiwi Yen eases back after a 50% return rally. You can see that there. Key support comes in at 68.27. The pair should find itself under pressure to start the week with a risk off in equities. Might well not see much of a risk off. I mean, the resistance comes in at 69.21. So we'll go with that, that 69.21 on the upside. And there's going to be the support right there. Let's dip down here. Yuri uh, rallied 400 pips over the last week and a half to the big fig of 120. A safe haven move to start the week will open a challenge for support of 1870, but we did hold above the 1870. A daily close below 1830 breaks the bull's case, opening a potential move to 1650. So we did go and hold above that 1870, so we're going to call that our support 1870. And on the upside, you can see right there. Don't move this here. Right there. Basically, like fill in the gap, which they, they've kind of made a move up towards it, but they've kind of rolled back. You can see that here. Let's pull this in. You can see that right there. So they ran out of gas right there at 51 and our resistance right there have been 56, so it's going to be the 1856. Let's go into the Euro odd.
Buron held critical level 59 as a last stand. The pair is attempting to secure a foothold above weekly level 69, 6095. Initial report is 6039 um, with resistance to 6176. You can see what they did last week. And boy, did they make an LMO stand. That was going to be a rough that. We had 59.89, but obviously on the ECB day when the EC, uh, Euro came under so much pressure, we did hold the 59. We saw a pretty good level here, respond back. But um, as I mentioned here, our uh, support is going to be right there at 60.39. Resistance for right now is going to be right there at 6133. Let's go and move into the Euro Kiwi. The Euro Kiwi closed at the highs of the week. A daily close above immediate resistance, 74.35, will place the bulls back in firm control. Support is 72.24, uh, 72.21 for the bulls to reload. So um, let's take a look where we stand here with the Euro Kiwi. Support coming in right there at seventy two sixty two and resistance will be right there at seventy three sixty nine. The Aussie is rallied with eight consecutive higher closes, moving just above the weekly level of 74.02, confluencing with 74.07, which is a 38%. The pair will likely take a respite with risk off to start the week. Support comes in at 73.29. So resistance is going to be right there. Right there. 74.43. So a report will come in right there, 7357, 7357.
And let's go move into the guppy. The guppies break of 133, open the door for a wave of short covering. The pairs reach 35.17. The 38% of 2667 to 70, uh, 48.92. Weekly major resistance is 36.02. The initial support is 33.67, followed by a breakout level of 33. So you can see here that uh, we've kind of eased back. Obviously, the concern being with... Um, yeah, you know, the safe haven into the yen. Uh, we did rally back almost to 35, even here. Look at this. And then we've turned around and come back uh, quite a bit. Looks like we're forming potentially, but it's a long, the data is still very, very young, but almost looks like a gravestone doji. I mean, it actually looks perfectly if it were to close the day out like this. Uh, we'll take a look at resistance levels for today on the two hour chart. Resistance will be uh, right here at 34, right there. Thirty-four fifty. And support on this pullback. Thirty three sixty five. There is some support coming in right here. Um, <clears throat> But we are sliding back in sterling, so let's go with uh, go with thirty three sixty five. And let's wrap up. Let's wrap up with sterling odd. Sterling also reclaimed the critical level of 80.89, allowing for a challenge of 82.60. Support on the pullbacks must be defended at 80.23. So we're going to go with 80.23. We're obviously just a hair below this 80.89. So we're going to go with 80.23 for the support. Resistance is going to be right there at 
As I mentioned here, we we haven't even seen that much of a reaction here in gold. I mean, we saw a jump, but I mean, you know, look how far gold had fallen. Gold had fallen sixty dollars. So for us to rally fifteen was literally nothing, you know, basically. And so we've kind of seen the gold kind of weaken a bit. Uh, S and P's not even much of a reaction. A little reaction, but not not that much. Um, and we're seeing crude oil kind of quiet down here. Bunds are still remain weak, obviously, with rates higher here in the bunds, but we have seen 10 year yields come off a bit. So, as I mentioned here, you can see relatively quiet trading here in the euro. Uh, cable a little bit under pressure. Peso, not even that much of a reaction whatsoever. And also, just holding up very nice and firm and very quiet trading here in the cash dollar index. Thanks for joining here on the European crossover webinar. I'll go and get this posted and uh, we will see you later on in the FX daily wrap up at 1230 Eastern. Thanks for joining us here.